वेलकम टू क्लास इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू द सीरीज ऑफ आर लेक्चर्स ऑन सर्वेइंग द मेजर वर्क्स एंड द सिग्निफिकेंट एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटर्स ऑफ द कंट्रीब्यूटर्स एंड स्कॉलर्स हु गिव शेप टू सोशल लिंग्विस्टिक्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट जोशुआ आरोन fishman who is better known for his approach as sociology of language uh joshua fishman's contribution to development of this modern independent discipline called social linguistics is immense and he has been an inspiring source for a huge number of scholars and practitioners in the field so while we are taking into account the development and emergence and development of social linguistics we cannot keep joshua fishman out of it he is one of the major pillars who gave shape to the discipline so let us do a brief survey of the life journey contributions and works of joshua fishman to social linguistics joshua aron fishman was born on july 18 1926 and he died on 1st march 2015 he was an american linguist who contributed immensely in a variety of areas and sub disciplines such as sociology of language language planning bilingual education language and ethnicity language and religion and moreover his immense contribution in uh, you know documenting uh, reviving revitalizing yiddish language which was close to his heart if you look at the academic journey of joshua fishman uh, after completing his graduate program he studied yiddish with max wendrich in the summer of 1948 max wendrich was father of yudel wendrich wendrich uh, he received a prize from the institute of yiddish research for his monograph on bilingualism he got a position as a research assistant for the jewish education committee of new york during 1951 and 1952 in 1953 he completed his phd in school Uh, in in social psychology at columbia university uh, and the topic of his, his thesis was negative stereotypes concerning americans among american born children receiving various types of minority group education if you look at the title it, you know it it's very interesting it says negative stereotypes so he is talking about the social attitude towards uh, a social class linguistic attitude towards a language and you know this this uh, founded his his understanding uh, in sociology of language if you look at the thesis title it says negative stereotypes concerning Americans among American born children receiving various types of minority uh, group education so migrant children or of the children from the migrant families uh, second generation third generation children who are born american but receiving education in a minority group education system and that began uh, you know he began his exploration of the similar idea in his further works post phd and he continued working on sociology of language 
and uh, looking at social class, uh, attitude, stereotypes towards class and towards language. He taught the sociology of language at the City College of New York from 1955 to 1958. In 1958, he was appointed as an assistant professor of human relations and psychology at Penn. He subsequently accepted a post as professor of psychology and sociology at Yeshiva University of New York. And during his, this stint, he also served as dean of the Farkoff Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. In 1966, he became Distinguished University Research Professor of Social Sciences, a very illustrious and bright career he had in academics. Uh, in 1988, he became Professor Emeritus. Later, he was affiliated with a number of institutions. To name a few, there he became Visiting Professor and Visiting a Scholar at School of Education, Applied Linguistics and Department of Linguistics, Stanford University. He became Adjunct Professor of Multilingual and Multicultural Education at School of Education in New York University. Uh, he became Visiting Professor of Linguistics at Graduate Center, City University of New York. And he has held visiting appointments and fellowship at over a dozen institutions around the world and some of them including included are like Center for Advanced Study in Behavioral Sciences, Stanford, California, uh, Institute for Advanced Studies, Princeton, New Jersey. And uh, he had various other affiliations and uh, appointments in a dozen of uh, institutions all over. Some, uh, you know, important honors and recognitions. In 1991, Fishman was honored by two Fresh Scripts publication to celebrate his 65th birthday. Each contained articles by colleagues and his contemporaries that followed his interest. Uh, one was a three-volume collection of articles concerned with his interest edited by Gracia Daw and Marshall. The other, a single volume edited by Cooper and Spolsky. In 1999, Fishman received Isaac Manager uh, in, ten, in 1999, Fishman received the Isaac Manger Prize for contributions to Yiddish lit literature and letters. In 2004, he was awarded the Lingua Pax Prize. On September 10, 2006, Fishman was honored by a one-day symposium of the University of Pennsylvania commemorating his 80th birthday and he died in the Bronx, New York on 1st March 2015 at the age of 88. Uh, if you look at the contributions he made, the range of his work and writings, you know, spread over a variety of subdisciplines of social linguistics. He worked prolifically on multilingualism, specifically on bilingual education and minority education. He worked authoritatively on the sociology and history of Yiddish language. He was the one after Einar Hugen gave a, a very significant contribution 
in language planning and uh, through his work on Yiddish he he published a number of works pertaining to reversing language shift language revival language and nationalism language and religion language and ethnicity so a wide variety of themes he worked on and a very significant contributions he made in all these areas we just listed like multilingualism bilingual education and minority education the sociology and history of yiddish language language planning uh, reversing language shift see the idea of language shift and language maintenance is that you know uh, because of various political social reasons a sizable population moves to another territory another area uh, as a guest community and there is a pressure for assimilation with the guest community guest community with the host community so this newly arrived population in the through the process of acculturation tries to uh, acquire and mix with acquire the language practices of the host community and you know in that process after a few uh, generations the the indigenous and the original culture and language uh, becomes you know it becomes difficult to survive for them and in a, in a long run the community shifts in terms of language and culture and practices to that of the host community so there is a language shift that takes place because of the pressure of assimilation uh, so this is what language shift and language maintenance this is a few communities through their intra community work and solidarity maintain language and culture of the community so fishman's work also extends to these areas and he talks about reversing language shift he is also talking about language revival for those languages you know like yiddish for that matter in his case uh, revival refers to uh, a deliberate attempt by a group of people or community at large to start uh using the language and extend the functions of it uh with with a consciously chosen uh you know make uh, initiatives to revitalize and uh, you know revive and uh, revive the language language and nationalism language and religion and language and ethnicity how language constructs identity right how language shapes the identity of its speaker so these are the areas joshua fishman wrote prolifically and very productively and his writings remain inspiration for uh, all of us and all the people who are interested in these areas and are working in the field fishman is the founder and editor of the contributions of the sociology of language book series by muthan if you look at the select biographies uh, bibliography of of uh, fishman uh, you know he has written prolifically but what we have done we have tried to represent uh, the significant important works that he produced and it's a select biography it's not an exhaustive list and if you look at that in 1964 he came up with language maintenance and language shift as a field of inquiry a definition of the field and suggestions for its further development published in linguistics volume 2 issue 9 and that's what i was talking about in the uh, you know earlier so he was the one who revived this subfield and also gave a guideline and a set of instructions for people who are working in the area 
through this publication. In 1965, Yiddish in America, Social Linguistic Description and Analysis, published by Bloomington, uh, uh, Indiana University Press. In 1966, another important publication came titled Language Loyalty in the United States, the Maintenance and Perpetuation of Non-English Mother Tongues by American Ethnic and Religious Groups. Uh, it was also published by Muthan. Um, See, if you if you if you look at the essence of his writings, he belonged to that Yiddish speaking minority community. So he's talking about the socio cultural and linguistic pressure these immigrants have in America. And uh, you know uh, lang language loyalty. Because, you know, uh, of late, not that time when Joshua Fishman was writing, but later on, English-only campaign was launched in U.S. with the belief that one language, one nation theory. So there is always a pressure on such minority groups and minority language because of the hegemonic spread of dominant language. So. Uh, his his publication in 1966 you know talks about language loyalty in the united states the maintenance and perpetuation of non english mother tongues by american ethnic and religious groups in 1966 again hungarian language maintenance in the united states so if you look at the direction of his work it goes in the similar direction then 1968 he talked about language problems of developing nations. He had immense contribution in language planning, right? Uh, and this idea of language planning also gets strengthened by the fact that uh, new uh, post-colonial countries, which were which were uh, which got freedom from colonial forces, uh, there was a need. There seemed to be a need do language planning uh, because of a changed global order. So his, his publication in 1968 came timely in talking about language problems of developing nations. Then in 1968 again another major publication came and that is called Readings in the Sociology of Language. It's like uh, 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 you know, primary reference book for people who are interested to understand the discipline and work in sociology of language. It remains a primary source of reference. Then in 1970, Social Linguistics, a brief introduction. Then in 1971, Bilingualism in Barrio published by Indiana University Press. Uh, in 1971, Advances in Sociology of Language, the similar series continues. And in 72, Language in Sociocultural Change, essays by Joshua Fishman. Then in 1972, The Sociology of Language and Interdisciplinary Social Science Approach to Language and Society. In 1973, Language and Nationalism. In 1974, Advances in Language Planning. In 1976, Bilingual Education and International Sociological Perspective. In 1977, Advances in Creation and Revision of Writing Systems. In 1978, advances in the study of societal multilingualism. And 1981, a very important publication came that was Never Say Die, A Thousand Years of Yiddish in Jewish Life and Letters. Learning Yiddish 
learning Yiddish from uh, Max Wendrich in 48. His, uh, you know, attachment with the language continues in his entire career. And uh, in 1981, a 1981 publication is the total sum of his, his work in Yiddish language that reflects his deep seated love for the language and it says the title look at the title never say die right never say die a thousand years of yiddish in jewish life and letters published by mutin it was published in both english and yiddish language in 1982 uh, the acquisition of biliteracy, a comparative ethnography of minority ethnolinguistic schools in New York City. In 1982, bilingual education for Hispanic students in the United States. In 1983, progress in language planning, international perspectives. In 1985, the rise and fall of ethnic revival, perspectives on language and ethnicity. In, in 1987, ideology, society and language. And the Odyssey of Nathan Bernbaum. In 1991, bilingual education. In 1991 again, Reversing language shift, theory and practice of assistance to threatened languages. So, if you look at his trajectory of writing and publications, uh, he touched upon many sensitive and significant themes during his career, like you know, language planning, language revival, language shift, restricting language shift. Right, minority languages and minority education, multilingualism, uh, bilingual education. So these are the major themes that he wrote on throughout his career. Uh, in 1991, language and ethnicity. In 1996, Post-imperial English, the status of English in former Britain and American colonies and spheres of influence. In 1997, he published In Praise of the Beloved Language, the Content of Positive Ethnolinguistic uh, Consciousness. In 1997, the multilingual Apple language in New York uh, with Ophelia Gracia, who was a co-author, 1999, Handbook of Language and Ethnicity. In 2000, a very important uh, publication came, and that is, can threatened languages be saved? Right. So he had that. He had that. Uh, you know, uh, close observation and a very meticulous. Uh, initiatives to save and you know to revive to restrict the shift all directed to minority languages languages of the Im immigrants languages of the uh, smaller groups in the united states uh, in 2000 can threatened languages be saved is a testimony of the same. In 2006, uh, do not leave your language alone. The hidden status agendas within corpus planning and language policy. He also cautions about planning, implications of such political plannings pertaining to language. So, you know. If you look at the contribution, major contribution of uh, Joshua Fishman, uh, they are all spread over multiple subfields of the discipline, like multilingualism, 
like bilingual education like minority education like uh, you know language maintenance and shift like language and ethnicity uh, you know like language planning like language revival right so these are the major themes that he worked on and he contributed immensely to the development of these fields within social linguistics and he remains an inspiring scholar a wonderful teacher and a very strong pillar in the discipline and his his writings and his publications stand as testimony of his deep seated love for language and uh, you know specifically yiddish language so joshua fishman is one of the uh, you know pillars solid pillars of the discipline and whenever we talk about social linguistics whenever we talk about sociology of language we cannot keep him out at any cost so joshua fishman remains a source of inspiration his his writings have uh, in, inspired thousands of uh, you know subsequent monographs articles theses phd theses and uh, you know if we if we want to work in minority languages if you want to work in language maintenance and shift you want to work in language and ethnicity you want to work in lang on language and ideology language and nationalism uh, if you want to work on uh, language uh, revival you cannot ignore joshua fishman so this is it for now about him we will explore more about others you know major contributors other major figures in the field like charles ferguson like uriel wendrick like ellen grimsa william wright we'll talk about all of these people in our coming classes stay tuned thank you very much and we'll meet soon